I'd like to call this meeting to order, a Coney County Budget, Finance, and Administration Committee. We're a couple minutes late, I'm sorry. Uh, we need to approve the minutes um, from our February 13th meeting. Do so I hear? Second. Any changes, additions, corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, we're going to begin uh, with the school district presentation, if that's okay with everybody. Do we actually need to amend the agenda or can we just change it? Okay. All right. So that being the case, school district, please. We appreciate you uh, allowing us to come over and uh, speak with you again. I'll uh, get the presentation up and we'll, we'll, we'll move forward. Uh, while it's coming up, we'll just tell you that this budget is based on the House version uh, of the budget that they have passed so far. The Senate recently um, completed their budget. There are some differences in it. Of course, uh, the House is probably not going to approve what the Senate said, so they're going to have to get a committee together. And we're looking at a May the 11th deadline for that budget to be finalized. So uh, we may have to make adjustments as we go, depending upon what information we get from the, the legislature. But it is based on the House version, which was the, the one we got the earliest. And uh, quite honestly, it's probably the worst case scenario for us as a school district. Um, you can see that uh, just like you guys struggle with getting the allocated money you're supposed to from the state, that they're not meeting their uh, state obligation on the base unit cost. Mm -hmm. uh, they're hitting about 80% uh, of that, and that's been a continual issue that, that we've dealt with. So uh, that's one of the reasons why we uh, continue to, to come up short um, at times with that. Um, the next one is a six-year history of uh, our revenue from, from the county and the state. And uh, it has the 2019 filled in uh, with an anticipated local taxes. We did not make any changes. Uh, hopefully the value of the mill will grow and there'll be some growth with that. But we left it as uh, it was for uh, the current year. And uh, you can see though that um, the uh, budget request is going up uh, some that we'll, we'll talk about in just a, a few minutes. Um, we always like to update you guys on the, the fund balance, uh, and because with this budget, uh, depending upon uh, what is approved and if there's an increase in the value of a meal, uh, we may be dipping into the, the fund balance to, to balance this budget out. Uh, we don't have the, the percentage for 2018, but we um, have managed to, to maintain a, a strong fund balance. Our policy calls for 20% of the operating budget. So this budget is just under uh, $100 million. So, you know, t give or take $20 million is, is where we'd be with the, the minimum on that. Um, you see a six-year history of, of school millage, and we, again, want to thank you during the reassessment year uh, this, for this current budget. Um, you were uh, very generous with us, and we understand that, and we appreciate that. Uh, we uh, continue to maintain our uh, bonds and debt millage at 31, and that's been consistent for a number of years. That's allowed us to do certain projects. Uh, we are currently getting heavily involved with the Career Center project that is on the campus with Tri-County Tech, as you guys are well aware of that partnership. Um, but uh, we uh, do appreciate the fact that we were able to, to move up from 110.1 from to the 115.3 after the, the reassessment year and maintain the 31 mils of uh, debt relief and bonds there. A um, couple of budget concerns that we have listed on the next page. Uh, this ongoing, this current budget year was 2%, but this ongoing increase in the employer contributions to retirement, um, that is 1% over the next five years to, to get to that max number. Um, there is, in the House budget, there's a proposed 7.1 increase in employer insurance costs. For us, that's about $530,000. The Senate version actually has an 8.4% uh, increase in that. That's one of the places where it is actually um, more harmful than, than the House budget. Uh, the House budget also calls for a 2% increase in teacher salaries, and that's uh, the salaries, uh, personnel's about 89% of our, our budget. Um, the Senate version calls for a 1% increase for, for our teacher salaries. And we've also included two additional SROs and some other security improvements. Um, 
the, the SROs, depending upon what we do with vehicles and those kind of things, to begin the program could be in the $90,000, $95,000 range. It could be a little less than that if we can um, repurpose some vehicles and, and those kind of things. Um, but we also have some other security things in here, some things that deal with mental health uh, evaluations for students and, and, and that kind of thing. And currently, um, there's a little bit included in here for the ASAP program or the program we've been talking about. If that is not approved by the board, then obviously that would come out and uh, could be used for, for something else or to lower the amount that we have to go into the um, fund balance. Uh, that would give us, I gave you the, the uh, sheet with the SROs, but that would give us 10 um, SROs, nine on, uh, on our budget and one that you guys have been given through the Sheriff's Department. And that would allow each of our elementary schools to um, share one between two schools. Currently, uh, Officer Mulwee has four schools in the Wahala area, um, and then the other two officers in Westminster and uh, the West Oak area and the Seneca area have three elementary schools that they're divided up amongst. Uh, this, the sheet that I gave you shows that we have one SRO at each of our middle schools and one SRO at each of our high schools. We do not have an SRO at our um, career center or our, our alternative school uh, at, at, at this point. Um, some things we took out of the, the budget, uh, there was um, um, half a million dollars in the last budget to, to help get the fund balance up to where it needed to be. Uh, we had to include some additional funding for leave payout because the Terry plan was ending and um, our policy allowed for employees to be paid uh, up to 45 days of their daily rate. I will tell you that policy was changed for anybody hired in two, after 2012. Uh, that does not uh, cost us that amount anymore. So it's only um, for people who were grandfathered in before 2012. But we were able to cut uh, approximately 300000 out. And then we were able to find some other cuts in uh, our sub certified classified pay and also included in that is some of our uh, custodial extra help and long-term subs in, in those areas. Um, I know this is kind of uh, repetitive, but I, I like to do it for the, for the general public uh, as much as for, for anybody, but we do have the two separate budgets. We have an operational budget and a capital improvement budget, and those are not interchangeable. We cannot um, you know, take money out of the capital improvement budget, the 31 mills, and put it into the operational budget. And you see what each budget is responsible for, uh, along with a few other things. But 89% of the, the operational budget is, is personnel costs, as I discussed earlier. And then we're using the um, capital improvement budget, obviously, to uh, improve our facilities. We just finished a big project at West Oak and, and Wahala Elementary. Uh, we're currently, again, we've got the next two years, two and a half years, um, budgeted for the Career Center project, which is going to be between for us, 30 to $33 million uh, will be the career center uh, part. And then soon after that, our goal is to get a Seneca Middle uh, School and a new, new middle school in Seneca. We're actually in the process of looking for property for that uh, future school now. Um, but the biggest thing is in red that we can't use the capital improvement budget, the 8% money for operational expenditures. And I know you guys, I'm preaching to the choir. So bottom line is uh, you can see the, the numbers, 47,736,808 is what we got this time and what uh, we asked there. Uh, the total budget, 66,148,696 from uh, here. Um, if adopted and funded then uh, and things stay the same with the local taxes, there's no um, increase in the value of a mill, we are not asking for any kind of millage increase at all in anything, um, then we would use about a million and a half out of the fund balance. Uh, our one request is, if we've, as we've talked in the past when we've come to, to you all, is that we don't um, see the millage lowered uh, in any way, shape, form, or fashion. We're not, we're not asking for an increase, but we don't see it lowered because once you lose it and give it back, it's very, very hard to, to get, get back. So um, that's the request in the bottom part is that if the current millage produces more revenue than last fiscal year, then we ask that the millage rate remain the same and we see that as additional uh, revenue to offset what we would go into the fund balance. Um, you have your uh, big notebooks there that I know you like to um, take some time to look at. We're on the uh, schedule to uh, come back again, I think, in uh, the 15th. 
Uh, maybe if you need us here or whenever you need us to come back and answer questions or, or present more information, we're happy to do that. But uh, that is our request at this time. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy. I've got Ms. Moore here who uh, develops the budget and we'll ask. Um, can you touch on a little bit about, you know, as y'all move forward on your, your buildings, you're staying up to date on all your buildings. So as I've seen, some other counties have had capital referendums just to get their schools back up to par. Um, one of the things that I've seen y'all do is stay on top of this so that capital referendum doesn't even have to be approached by our taxpayers. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. We, um, and, and I can't take credit for it. I think it's when Dr. Truesdale was here, she's the one that pushed for us to increase the, the debt mill to 31 mil so we could do certain projects and pay them off quicker, uh, therefore saving the taxpayers money and that. And we, we try to have a, a timeline of, of plans. And <laughs> this is the one year I took that slide out because uh, we hadn't talked a great deal about it. But we, we have a timeline laid out for five to seven years that the board approves where we look at uh, different projects. Um, what I see happening in other districts where they have gone into these huge referendums or they did that kind of lease deal that the, the state kind of ruled was I illegal uh, after, after a few districts had done it is they're all running into the same problems of having these huge needs all at the same time with the mechanical units, with the roofs, with the different things. And so we try to look at our needs and look at our money and budget out the best we can down the road. That's why, you know, I said the... Um, Career Center project, uh, we're going to have to work, use part of three years worth. Uh, this year we got uh, about $16 million in our bond sale in, in the February to, to use. And so we have to balance that out and start moving uh, how we're going to pay for the Career Center over the next, next three years when we finish with that. We try to do some other smaller projects. We also take out of that uh, um, $500,000 for technology. We take out some costs for general maintenance, th things that, that are going to come up. Uh, we try to, um, you know, get a hold of the things before they become a, a major cost to the district. But we do lay out a five- to seven-year plan that we put before the for the board, and we try to move it around by area. We try to be fair in every place that we're, we're going. And uh, like I said, the Career Center is the next big one um, that we're currently involved in. Seneca Middle will be the big one after that. And we also have, if we can fit it in as we're doing those, um, the gym at James and Brown is, is very high on the board's priority list. So. Did that answer your question? Yeah, it did. Thank you for not having to put us through that. So that was yeah. a good thing. Yeah, we don't want to so go we through, appreciate we you don't staying. Want to through uh, that. Uh, Being proactive on the on the building and maintaining of that as well. So from all the facilities that I've been in, they're doing a good job. I don't see any having to walk around buckets. And I know as, as you know, the Career Center is the next one, then the next build is Seneca, Seneca Middle. Middle School. When um, the, the Walla High School, y'all have it finished uh, paying when? Now. What? When? When did you leave? Now. Now? Huh. Not, no, but I mean. We're in the. It's about seven years. Yeah, that's what I'll say, seven. seven. Eight years. So we, we've been in that building three years, so probably four or five years yeah. from now it'll be completely paid off. Okay. Not 25 or 30. Yeah. So you got four or five years left on the pay. Yeah. Okay. Career Center will. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? <clears throat> yeah, I have one question. Go ahead. When you're on the House version, on your revenue, you got motor carrier fees uh, is the same as last year. How do they base motor carrier fees? Doesn't that, doesn't that come off the bill of ladens? It does come from the Department of Revenue. Uh, it's not a number that we generate. It comes from um, the Department of Revenue through the county to us. He should have the house. This this should have gone up. They don't. We don't change it from year to year. No, it, I said they should have yeah, given you more money. Probably. Like y'all. Right. Um, you need to ask them about this. Okay. You could be sure get more money coming to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McCall. Will you enlighten mm -hmm. us down here on what you were talking about? Every time you ship something by bill of laden, is a, a part of the bill of laden is a carrier fee. Whatever you get the motor freight. 
and the part of the bill of lading goes to the, that percentage goes because you can't deliver freight in the, in South Carolina or any other state unless you have a motor carrier. To be a motor carrier, you have to issue bill of ladens for any freight. The money from the freight, the bill of ladens is a certain percent on that line item that goes to the state. In this county, we got more trucks coming in, so their money should have increased. They should be getting more money because there are more bill of ladens being issued in this county. And that's something they, not us, but they, they could look at because they could possibly have more money coming to them. Okay. It's, like, it's, line a, it's line eight on the um, general fund revenue projections house version. Okay. Right. Learn something new every meeting. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out, sir. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we can try it. Any other questions for us? Any other questions? No? Oh. Yes, sir. I just wanted to apologize that I wasn't able to make it here in time. I got off an airplane at 4 o'clock at GSP and got here as quick as I could. So I'm sorry I missed the presentation, but I'll, I'll look over this and let you all know if I have any questions. Well, I hope you didn't get a speeding ticket. No, the, sh the sheriff sent an escort. Oh, okay. good. oh nice. That's not no, he didn't. He didn't. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Sheriff. <laughs> if you have any questions, you know how to, to reach private, out and get it. Private jet we added into the budget. That's right. I could have said you used the helicopter. Thank you all very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Mulder. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, I'm before you this evening to present my recommended budget for fiscal year 2019. Um, is this too loud? It yeah, sounds it really down. loud. It is loud. Back it down a little bit. How's that? Is that a little better? Okay. Um, before you, you should have really a booklet. Well, almost before you, you will, will have a booklet with two documents, one of which is just a copy of the PowerPoint presentation that you'll re receive this evening. And the second document is the actual detailed line item budget document um, that the PowerPoint presentation was developed I from. Thank you. Oh, yes, I do. I have all of it. Thank you. We try to make it a little easier to work from totals and summaries and highlights than going through the actual document. But we still provide you with the detail uh, so that you can review how those numbers were developed. And then if we have any specific questions about anything you see in the PowerPoint, we can specifically reference the detailed line item budget in order to determine how those numbers were developed. So uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the agenda that I have for you today is uh, basically how the presentation is laid out. We'll uh, talk about the general fund, uh, look at the summary revenues expenses. We'll talk about our special revenue funds individually. Uh, those usually aren't quite as a, a glamorous of a discussion um, as, say, the general fund is. And then you've got your capital projects funds, enterprise fund, debt service, and then the a new slide um, that's titled Council's Projects, so to speak. Uh, that's where we would list out any items from the strategic plan session or any other items that I may have heard you guys mention through uh, a number of uh, discussion mediums um, that I'm trying to fit into the budget and have identified a dollar figure there. So, and we'll get to those more specifically. So that's kind of the, the way the, the meeting's gonna lay out. Obviously our vision and, and mission statement, um, I won't read it to you, but it's in there for anybody to read. I like to always include that as a reminder of uh, what council uh, had decided a couple years ago when they amended those statements was their priorities and, and how they were gonna go about um, making their decisions. Uh, general fund, let's roll right into that summary. So what I'm proposing for you this year in your general fund budget is a, a budget of $45,841,784 um, uh, of uh, revenues and expenditures of operations, and then you see your other financing sources there. Um, the revenues we're seeing about a $1.5 million increase in our projected revenues for next year from this year. We'll look at the revenues more uh, detailed here in just a minute. And our expenditures in the summary we broke up for you by personnel, operating and capital, and debt service. Um, the debt service, obviously, the, the lease payments for the equipment and, and vehicle purchases stays the same. We did see an increase in our operating and capital by $980,087. Uh, 
Uh, let me just clarify that that is not operational. There's 900,000 of that number is in the council's projects page where we were able to fund some of those projects that I've heard you guys talk about. Uh, and then our personnel went up 590,000 roughly. Uh, the majority of the lion's share of that is through the state retirements 1% increase requirement for our employer contributions, as you heard the school district talk about theirs. Now, uh, met with Ms. Kamick earlier today, um, and she and I both agree that the state is, is entertaining with a, assisting us again this year with that additional 1% increase. Uh, so we feel comfortable, not, I don't feel comfortable enough to take it out of the budget yet, but knowing that we have a plan for it in the event the budget passes, the, the state budget passes with that additional assistance. And I believe that was run roughly 249 Two hundred fifty thousand dollars, if I remember correctly, um, on that one percent. So, that's uh, kind of the general fund summary. So let's dive into the revenues specifically by division or by type. Um, as you can see there, we're seeing about $168,000 increase in our property taxes. Uh, that is a, a conservative estimate. Uh, it may actually be more like a million, um, but I prefer to keep those uh, numbers a little more conservative. And the majority of that tax increase is coming from your fee in lieu of tax increases. We're starting to see the benefit and, and, and realize the uh, fruits of, of Mr. Blackwell's labor with regard to his efforts in recruitment and, and retention. So we actually have seen an increase of uh, almost a million dollars in our property tax revenues, specifically through the fee in lieu of tax. Uh, I will tell you that in the current year, we had actually budgeted $44.4 million uh, rounded for our revenues. We're actually going to see probably $46.8 million based on our projections uh, that Ms. Price and, and her team have worked on. So we're going to see an increase of almost $2.5 million in our revenue. A million of that obviously is from what we feel is the, the fee in lieu of tax revenue. And our expenditures, uh, just for to round those numbers out, uh, we're actually going to project that we can we can save about a million dollars worth of our expenditures from what we had actually budgeted. Uh, so we're going to look at probably about a $1.7 million uh, general fund surplus in our operating budget this year. And that does include our ins health insurance costs that I would mentioned to you before that are, are climbing uh, an overage of about $1.7 million in our, our health insurance. So um, we feel very comfortable with the increase of the $1.5 million in our revenues. As you can see there, we're projecting to be at 45 921.784, and that's about a $1.5 million increase from this current year. Uh, so based off our, our projections from this year, based off of the fee in lieu of tax and the property tax assessment analysis that we, analyses that we actually conduct, we're projecting a $1.5 million in our revenues, $1.5 million increase in our revenues. Our expenditures, uh, looking at the uh, division types, general government, public safety, you'll see we're projecting a $45.921784 million expenditure budget for fiscal year 19. That is a $1.5 million increase from, from current year. As you can see, the majority of that is uh, increases in the general government of $1 million. I'll point out that 900 of that is for that council page again for those additional uh, projects we were able to put into this budget based on your direction. So uh, I, don't want, I want to be clear that $1 million isn't just $1 million increase in operations. That is for specific purposes as identified by council, and I'll share those with you here in just a little, little while. Uh, so again, uh, 45 uh, $0.9 million worth of expenditure recommendations. So let's look at it by departments, uh, summary by department. You can see that first line, the council's project list, 900000 That's where 900 of that one point five came from. The rest of it is just general increases throughout the budget. You can see there's just as much red in those departmental budgets as there, there is black. Um, so your general government is broken down by department there for you. Uh, so you can see where we saw any increases. I will tell you the retirement cost, the 1% the increase that we're projecting, is in these departmental budgets. So the dominant share of these departmental increases is because of the retirement or personnel matters, not necessarily because we have increased their, their allotment for operational budgets. The, the next page, it obviously continues for public safety. Um, you can see there we saw an increase of about 115,000 for the sheriff's department and then 197,000 for the detention center. Again, out of fairness to him, that's a lot of that is due to the retirement increase. They, since they carry the lion's share of the salaries, they're obviously going to have to carry the lion's share of the uh, retirement expense as well. 
Um, then you see your transportation. Again, no real outliers with, with increases there. We tried to keep those increases minimal so that way we could do, do additional positive things with any increases that we are realizing in our revenues. Um, we've tried to hold the line. We, we utilized that three-year budget document that I put together last year. Uh, we looked at the year two projections. Uh, any questions that I may have had, I sent those to the department head, and we made adjustments uh, as needed for items that had, had occurred over the last year that we did not foresee the previous year when we did the three-year document. Uh, public works and then culture and recreation. Uh, you do see a, a South Cove Park an increase of almost $53,000. Uh, I'll tell you that we did increase their, their budget a little bit, but their revenues, because they're going like gangbusters, has uh, climbed so significantly. We're <coughs> still seeing a net positive gain even on top of that $52,000. Uh, so we saw a significant increase in their revenues. Uh, summary by department continues even on the next page. You see judicial services, health and welfare. Again, no big outliers there. Economic development, a uh, little bit of an increase, but uh, obviously if he's bringing us over a million dollars worth of new revenue in, seeing a little bit of increase there, still a net positive gain for us uh, to reward him for his efforts. So he's doing well. And then the last page for the summary by department, you can see the debt service lease payments for the capital leases that we have uh, issued over the last three or four years, and then the other financing uses uh, that you see there at $80,000 recommended, which is actually a decrease uh, from the prior year. And then the other financing sources, it gets very confusing sometimes, but this is, I broke it down for you in detail. These are sources that um, and uses, sources are other items of revenue that aren't directly associated with your operating income. So you've got sale of capital assets, you auction off old equipment, that's where that type of, of revenue will be listed. Insurance recovery on our health plan, so we get reimbursements for certain expenses that we paid for that may have been over our stop gap. Uh, they'll reimburse us about that back. Um, so you've got a number of different transfers ends from other funds, such as the CVB replacing us or paying us back for the salaries for those staff when we move them into our budget. So again, other financing sources is revenue that you receive, but it's not directly associated with the operation of the organization. So you can see we projected about an $818,000 um, um, other financing sources revenue. We did remove the sale of capital assets revenue. What we have decided to do in an effort to help subsidize the cost of replacing capital equipment, anything that we get now for sailing of capital assets, we're putting into a special fund to use to go towards purchasing some of the other things on our capital vehicle and replacement plan um, to help kind of ease the burden of what the general fund has to pay for. Now, we're not talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, we're talking you know 100,000 or less, but if we keep putting that into that fund, over a few years, it may be enough to buy a fire truck out of it or a large piece of equipment out of it rather than it hitting the general fund for that year. So anything that we sell, we've started putting the, the income from that into a special fund for future purchases of, of equipment and vehicles. And then other financing uses, uh, these are also expenses, if you will, that may be for another fund or may not be directly associated with your um, operation of the general fund. So you can see there, there's a, um, about $80,000 worth of other financing uses, both of which are transfers to victim services funds, one for the solicitor and one for the sheriff, because the assessments and fines and fees that we get in return um, to pay for those services isn't enough to, to accommodate the expense. So we subsidize those funds from the general fund of about $80,000. Any questions so far? Okay. Capital vehicle and equipment uh, is the next slide. You'll see here, this is all that I am proposing in the budget for this year for capital vehicle equipment. Um, honestly, we can't afford much more than that um, based on the current budget allotments uh, and the way I propose. So we've got 25,000 at the airport, 20,000 in communications. The two fire department vehicle expenses are staples in the budget. They're in there every year. The 75,000 goes to replace the uh, small rolling stock of, of response vehicles, your F-250s, F-350s, um, and then the large fire truck obviously is one of the, the fire trucks we provide for the volunteer stations in the cities that we put in every year. 
Um, High Falls looking at a, a new mower for 5,000. IT, that's a standard. We put about 40, 50,000, depending on the year, every year in to replace computers on a rolling schedule rather than doing them all at one time. We replace every so many uh, every year uh, so that we keep them updated and fresh. Uh, and the sheriff's office, his also is a staple in the, in the budget of 400000 for replacement of his vehicles. And then South Cove, uh, we're pr proposing a, a new vehicle. They're currently utilizing a, an old Dodge Durango. It's like a 2006 model with 300,000 miles. So we're proposing to actually go ahead and replace that this year. Uh, so you're looking at a total capital outlay of $980,000 as proposed. And then your special revenue funds, uh, emergency services fund, we're looking at Yes, sir. Why doesn't South Cove just use an old sheriff's vehicle? The sheriff's vehicles, number one, the Crown Vicks would not be sufficient for them, for those old ones, because they use those vehicles to carry equipment and, and tools and supplies around um, that um, the Crown Vic wouldn't hold. And then the Tahoes, the issue with those is we get um, a, so much money on the sale of those things uh, we bring in anywhere from twelve to eighteen thousand dollars, even at auction, on those uh, that we can turn around and put back into the fund to to purchase vehicles. The the um, South Cove Park really needs a truck more than a Durango or a Tahoe or a Crown Vic because they're constantly carrying trash. They're emptying out um, fire pits. They're you know loading up yard debris that they cleaned up. So they really need a truck in order to maintain the park versus a Durango or a Tahoe or something like that. So they just need something to haul stuff around? Well, I mean, they use it for all kinds of maintenance purposes. Uh, but the truck was, is, is good for doing the work around the park to haul things around. Yes, sir? Well, do you like to see your son if you get a Hummer? Uh, the Humvees, they're enclosed. I mean, I'd prefer a truck. Well, you get with roof with no roof? They have them with no roof or anything? You get them all different diversions, okay. about four different diversions of them. We'll certainly look at state surplus. Actually, um, Ernie was down there today looking at Tahoe's for the emergency services rather than buying new. So Ernie was actually down there today at surplus. So we'll certainly look at surplus um, as we have been um, for normal practice over the last couple of years. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, emergency services fund. We're projecting about a $1.4 million budget for them. And we're, for current year, next year we've got a $1.5 million budget uh, and obviously $1.5 million expenditures. Again, these are just summary numbers. If you want to see the detail, that's why we've also provided that to you, uh, the detail budget. Um, the, the majority of the Emergency Services District Special Revenue Fund goes to volunteer support. So you've got... $310,000 of that goes to small equipment support for your stations, as well as $831,000 worth of grant to independent agencies. Uh, and then you've got $265,000 that goes to volunteer compensation that, where they get paid per call. Uh, so that's 1.9, 1.09. So really 1.3 of that 1.5 million goes directly to the volunteer stations as our grant and aids. And then you've got other minimal experience like equipment maintenance where we have to do equipment testing, um, telephones, maintenance and grounds, gas and fuel oil and electricity for our uh, substations uh, in the in the, out in the community, and then you've got a uh, replacement in there of 22000 for uniforms and clothing for uniforms, turnout gear, and things like that. So, uh, you know, you're, you're talking about well over a, a $1.2, $1.3 million going directly to the stations of that $1.5 million. Then you've got the Sheriff's Victims Assistance Fund. Again, these, these funds are funds that we receive, there's a, an assessment that's put on each ticket that uh, goes to the magic court that's supposed to go back to help fund operations to support victims of crime. Uh, we have a victim services officer uh, that does both the sheriff and, sol and solicitor's work. Bless you. There, there's two, there's two separate, okay. Um, so you've got one for the sheriff and then one for the solicitor that are, they're charged with providing assistance to victims of crimes. Uh, and these are the two funds where we subsidize with the 80,000 I mentioned earlier. Uh, so you can see how we've anticipated the assessment surcharges and the general fund transfer uh, covering the uh, salaries and fringe of 148,884 uh, for those, those uh, operations with an estimated fund balance at the end of it of $38,000 when it's all said and done after next year. 
solicitors, victims assistance fund, same scenario um, as before. 911 communications fund, as you have heard before, these funds come from uh, special surcharges on telephone bills uh, and your cell phone bills. You'll see them down there, government fees. Uh, those funds are collected by the state, remitted to us. We keep them in a separate fund. There's stipulations and restrictions on how those monies can be spent. They've got to go to directly uh, benefit the 911 center. They can't be used for radios and such. We've used it in the past to replace consoles, software. Uh, put additional seats in at the 911 center when we did the fire department dispatcher. Uh, but we've broken it down to show you the revenues from the AT&T surcharges, the local exchange, um, the wireless funding, and the budget control board funding. So a total budget there of $1.3 million uh, worth of expenses. The expenses were identified by Captain Tilson and the sheriff as needed upgrades to the 911 center. And again, specifically, um, if you want to see those broken down, you can see $800,000 on equipment maintenance. Um, you'll see the $150,000 for telecommunications and, and such. Uh, only $300,000 of it is going to actual capital equipment replacement. And then the Tri-County Tech Fund, uh, just to update you on that, we received a request from Tri-County Tech uh, for a, uh, an increase in their operational monies that we provide, and they're also requesting an increase in the bond payment that we're paying out of that fund. They apparently are seeing an increase, according to them, in their interest rate of 2.63% to 3.196%, which is going to increase their interest payment. So they're requesting an increase from us to cover that in addition to their operational increases. Uh, Ms. Price and I looked at that. She's run the analysis, and we feel comfortable that they will have sufficient revenue in the current millage to cover even the increased request and still have about $11,000 um, left over from the, the year when it's all said and done to be added to their fund balance, which we project will be at $670,516 at the end of the fiscal year. Uh, so we feel comfortable that there's a sufficient millage collection for the year to cover even those increases. Uh, so you can see the total of... 1670000 uh, worth of millage revenue collected. Road maintenance fund, $1,250,000 um, for the maintenance repair paving and then $220,000 um, going to state forestry and coming in from state forestry. Um, nothing real exciting there. Capital projects funds, let's move to economic development fund and bridges and culvert. Economic Development Fund, we're projecting revenue of $769,000 from the 1.1 mills that we assess, uh, and I'm showing an expenditure of $615,000 for that. Uh, what we've got, the majority of that is grant match, $550,000 worth of grant match towards the uh, Interstate uh, Highway 2, uh, excuse me, Exit 2 uh, expansion. We've got the grant application in. We have not received comment back from that, but we did include into the budget from that fund the $550,000 with a grant match in order to complete that project. And then we've got the remaining $65,000 just towards miscellaneous projects, as uh, Mr. Blackwell may need throughout the year. It could be engineering or additional studies or surveys or things associated um, with his, his operations. So we included that in there as his, his flexibility. But again, $550,000 to 615 is going towards grant match. Bridges and Culverts Fund, uh, we're showing just a, a basic expense in Bridges and Culvert of $530,000 for maintenance and repair. Those funds are used for uh, replacement of, of culvert piping on roads, uh, drainage situations, and then we also let that build up a little bit. You can see the estimated balance right now is $3.3 million in that fund. If you look down to the bottom is where we'll end up. Uh, we, we allow that to grow because bridges are, not, are very costly to replace. If you recall, the last bridge we were supposed to replace was Cobb Bridge. We went back and did some maintenance on it, some sandblasting and painting instead of replacing it. So that balance is still sitting there for the next bridge replacement um, that uh, is identified in the future. All right, Rock Quarry Fund, we're looking at a total budget uh, of $7.2 million. That's a huge increase. Uh, excuse me, $12.2 million. That's a huge increase from the prior year. The reason being is we've actually calculated the replacement of the, the rock crushing plant in next year's budget. If you'll look, you'll see a bond proceed revenue toward the top of $6.5 million. 
and then you'll see in the red toward the bottom a plant upgrade of 7.5 million. So we have included the revenues and expenses for completing that plant replacement and upgrade in next year's budget. Other than that, the, the budget, uh, we saw an increase in our blasting because if we're selling more, we're going to need more, so we've had to increase our blasting budget. Uh, we've also seen increases in our revenues because we're going to propose a $1 increase per ton on our, our fee for next year. Uh, when you get the budget ordinance, you'll see that fee. We're going to project a $1 increase. Um, we have not shown any of the other major expenses associated with the rock plant upgrade because those operational expenses won't be realized until one more year because we've got to get the plant replaced next year, start operating it. And then the report that I presented to you that showed the impact to our operational budget, that's what it will look more like in the second year after we get the plan. And then your debt service fund. Right now we've got a debt service millage of 3.5 mils. Uh, you can see how we've calculated out the uh, principal and interest payments uh, in addition to the revenue that the millage will calculate. Um, I had originally had hoped and thought we would have room to issue debt. Uh, I actually mentioned that to Ms. Kamick this morning, uh, that we may have room to issue debt. The calculations that we had did not have the bond, the, the principal and interest payment from the $4 million we just issued, and that was the gap we were missing, is the payment on that one. Uh, and that was 368000 or roughly. Um, so we do not have the room in our debt millage as of right now in order to do anything else to issue debt with. Well, when does the first, uh, the latest bond fall off? I'm sorry? When does the latest series of bonds fall off? The $4 million is, will actually fall off. It was a 10-year issuance, so mm -hmm. it'll be a while before that one does. Mm -hmm. The next fall off that we have is, and it's easier for her to pull it out than it is me. Twenty twenty two will be the next time we have a debt service roll off. Twenty twenty five. That's high point point west. That's paid from taxes anyway. 2026, and that's the Workforce Development Center. That's the $3.3 million that we issued plus the 700000 short term. That was the uh, Workforce Development Center site improvements for the Tri-County Tech. That one will roll off in 2026. And that's the one that when we went back and looked at the calculations, that payment wasn't added in since it was such a, a new issuance. So our debt service fund will hold steady at 3.5 mils with a, enough sufficient to make the payments. All right, so here's where the $900,000 came in that's on the summary page for increases in operations for the council's projects list. Uh, so what I've done is I've kind of listed a number of the items that we've, we've talked about or I've heard over the last few months. Number one, an additional fire truck for the fire departments on top of what we currently have budgeted. Uh, I've heard about two, new, two to three new officers for the sheriff department. Uh, I've also heard that we need to fund five more positions for the fire departments. Uh, we've talked about the corridor planning, the comprehensive <coughs> plan rewrite, and then the, on your goals you have the High Falls ADA upgrade, uh, restroom upgrade. So that's a total of $1.264 million. As you can see, those add up to more than what I've included into the budget. Uh, what I have included in the budget as of right now in the 900000 is your additional fire truck for the fire, the $250,000 for the sheriff positions, and the $300,000 for the five new um, fire personnel. The bottom three are not in the budget as of right now, as presented. Uh, I know that there are some, some ideas that we, we talked about this morning. Mm -hmm. Ms. Kamek's got some presentations, I believe, that she's going to present to you here in just a moment uh, once we finish this up on how we can resolve those. But that's... Uh, those are the items I were able to fund, the top three. Uh, anything beyond that did not get funded. So th that is the administrator's fiscal year 2019 recommended budget. Uh, as you can see there, at this point, there is no proposed tax increase. 
unless there was anything else that we wanted to try and fund above and beyond what I've presented to you tonight. I will take any questions. How much money do we uh, make or from uh, the auction on uh, used equipment? All right. So last year, <clears throat> last year we made thirty-one thousand four hundred and sixty-five dollars. Is what we got in in fiscal year seventeen. Uh, this current year. I believe it was right around that same number. In fiscal year 16, we made 61,000. In fiscal year 15, we made 42,000. So if you want to kind of look at an average number, I'd say anywhere from 30 to $50,000 is where we're going to end up when we sell our equipment. Now, with that being said, in those sales, there was a lot, excuse me, a lot more Crown Vicks. Now that we're going to start turning over the Tahoes that we've been buying, those are going to bring a lot more. For example, at an, an average price that we would get for a Crown Vic with 200,000 miles at an auction uh, was roughly $1,500, five, you know, 500, depending on if it had any dents or scratches, to, to 3,000. In this last auction, the Tahoes were bringing twelve to eighteen thousand dollars with the same amount of mileage. So we're and we're spending less to maintain them. So I think as we start rolling more of the Tahoes off the line than the Crown Vicks, that that thirty to fifty thousand number number might go up a little bit more um, than what we had before because we just we have just started purchasing those and they haven't started rolling off the line quite as heavy as say some of the older Crown Vicks. So that number might rise over the next few years. How much do we pay the auctioneer? Ten percent. I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look. Well, I suggest that we hire an auctioneer to do it for X number of dollars and not pay him a percentage, because Mr. Crenshaw does his own auctioneering there, and he can tell you how much money he saves. You do your own auctions. We did, uh, you know, our uh, seized assets auction, drug auction. Uh, I, I did it myself, but uh, you know, which we, we were able to keep all that all that money uh, back in the drug fund. But uh, you could teach Mr. Moulder. <laughs> <laughs> I talk fast enough. I should be able to do it. Um, either that, or I'll just have the sheriff come over and do it. Be, be glad to. <laughs> That was just a suggestion. I mean, seriously, I, we could hire somebody for five hundred dollars a day, and and were you paying them three thousand bucks to come up there and auction for one day? Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay, I'll turn it back over to you, Madam Chair. Okay, after uh, Mr. Mulder and I met this morning and we were looking at council's projects, we started shuffling it all around based on other more recent needs. So what I'm passing out right now is just some alternate scenarios for you to consider. Um, I also want to pass around a document I received from our fire commission talking about their needs. Uh, so you'll have more information on that. And I also want to pass around what I discussed the other day as far as our, um, whatchamacallit, our advertising budgets accounts. You can see how it's divided into different groupings and how much we spend just for your knowledge. So let's just take a look at the alternate scenario. These are things uh, Mr. Mulder and I had discussed. Uh, based on my discussions with the fire commission, yeah, they would like to have five fire personnel, but right now in this moment, they're actually interested in more fire trucks. They're, huh? Sure. Yeah, here. So, um, you know, their fire trucks are aging. Uh, how long ago was it that we purchased like 20 all at once? Was that 15 years ago, 20 years ago? Okay, so those are, those are, you know, aging and need to be replaced, and they would like us to, instead of replacing one at a time, to consider replacing a few more at a time. So Mr. Mulder had included one in the budget. I suggested instead um, that we actually include three and kind of get them more up to date a little bit quicker. 
So that was one of the ideas we tossed around this morning. The other hot topic, of course, is the SROs. Um, and um, depending on uh, how you feel about um, the county actually funding them, uh, we could possibly, instead of the sheriff positions, uh, deal with that first because the public seems to be um, you know, eager for you know, each school to have its own. Uh, so in lieu of uh, added sheriff and detectives at this point, perhaps we should consider funding five SROs, which will uh, bring the number of SROs that are needed to do all the traditional schools in the county. Um, we talked about paying for the corridor planning and comprehensive plan uh, because it's a one-time expense out of the current year fund balance. If you recall, last year we returned 1.4 million to our fund balance. The year before we returned half a million to our fund balance. So we should be able to, the way we've been budgeting, uh, pay for that simply out of the funds we have this year. Now, uh, here's the kick, kicker here. We were thinking of paying for shower room upgrades in the new magistrate building through the debt service, so we really need to reconsider this now. Yeah, we'll, we'll go back and look mm -hmm. another scenario. Okay, and um, the, the talk at the Association of Counties has been, in the Finance Committee at least, has really centered around the South Carolina Retirement Plan. And uh, the, the feeling is that, yes, the, the state will fund um, some more this year, just like they did last year. So we propose taking the savings, which will amount to about 200, 250,000, and put them toward recreation funding uh, in, a, in the form of grants um, that um, the various recreation groups can apply for, meet our stipulations, and then receive uh, county funds for, uh, extended county funds for recreational purposes. We also discussed uh, giving employees a raise um, so those are added uh, things for you to consider right now. Um, I wouldn't say this minute. I'm not looking for an answer to this minute, but we definitely need to discuss. Um, Madam Chair, if I may. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the biggest things that I see, you know, you're talking about the SROs. You know, mm -hmm. we, we need to, you know, with projects that we do, um, it seems like we kind of, you know, piecemeal stuff together year from year, instead of you know solving it appropriately as we as we move forward. And one of the things that I would state is, you know, what is the, uh, you know, I would propose that we find a way to solve the SROs to where we're covering all school district facilities. I know that the school um, is funding two in theirs, but in a, in a, and I was kind of looking at your sheet here. Where it says the SRO should be part of the school district's budget. Um, my my opinion is the SROs affect every household member, every child, every home, and if we limit that to just a millage increase from the school district, um, you know it affects a small portion. Where you know school resource officers, you know protect all our kids, and they affect us all over this county, and it is the county share. Um, that they put it forward and I, I think that it is part of our budget uh, it should be part of our budget to finish the SRO school resource officer plan um, because I know what impact they have on there and um, you know as I've said before 99.9% .9 of their job is to be a mentor and they they do such an excellent job and we hope they never perform the point one percent but um, you know, I think that this this council needs to finish the job in front of us, and that needs to be part of our budget um, to fund the SROs. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mike, how many resource officers do you say we need? Well, there's actually seven left to complete everything. Nine. Yeah, but Tri County Tech, and, and I would, you know, Tri County Tech has, you know, armed officers as it is. There probably is a relationship there to be had uh, between Tri County Tech and the new uh, Hamilton Career Center when that is built. So I don't really think we need to discuss that at this point. I think we seven. need to solve the immediate one right now. <clears throat> then it would be seven 
uh, would to cover ten, seven more would cover ten elementary schools, three middle schools, and three high schools. Uh, the the plan going forward is for the alternative school and adult education to move into the current current Hamilton career, career mm -hmm. center, and then of course we will have the new the new career center and the Tri County Tech campus. And I haven't gotten confirmation. I certainly hope Tri County Tech is going to staff that with their security, but uh, we we, we I, don't know that. I definitely, you know, with with Oconee Academy, uh, needs to be included in that for one for the number one for the mentoring aspect and the relationship with officers. It goes a long way with those kids. And, yes, and that that is the hope that we bring those kids back from Oconee Academy back into the school system. And I know there's been a lot of success here lately, but I would, you know, push for that to be included in there. Yes, sir. I would agree. And that I mean, failed. the adult, adult ed, I mean, it is close to some of our schools. Um, and, and I mean, as it moves to the Hamilton, older Hamilton Career Center area, it does have, you know, I mean, it is closer to, one of our fire stations per se. I'm, I'm not saying that, it, but you know, as I think Oconee Academy needs to be included on there. I wouldn't disagree with you. Does that mean that you're going to need eight? That, that's that still correct. means you're going to need seven, right? Oconee Academy was on the SDOC list. No, it would, it would be eight if we include the Oconee Academy Alternative School, it would be eight. And the school district is including two more in their budget this year, so that would be six more on top of those to complete it if you did eight. And we're proposing five already, so. No. Um, the, the alternative that Ms. Kim presented two, would be five. five. That's correct. So all you got to do is add one more, right? Right, but the funding... My, my proposal is to fund it through the county budget, not through the school district budget. And I think that's what's presented here. No, I didn't say fund it through the school district budget. I said as the school district budget, as the value of the school district mill increases, they should assume some of that responsibility okay. because it's really school safety should be under their budget. That's what I said on that. Okay, okay but let me get the numbers straight again. So currently we, there are nine school resource officers. Right, eight in the SDOC budget and one in your budget. Where is Sheriff Crenshaw? Is that correct? Currently, currently, currently there's staffed nine. Three, six, nine. There's currently nine, nine positions. Uh, one of those is in the county budget. And eight in the SDOC. In the school district budget. Yes, okay. ma'am. But how many traditional schools? Let's not, before we go into the other types of schools, there's 16 traditional schools. But yes, ma'am, that's okay. correct. So 16 minus nine is seven. seven. So that leaves seven for the traditional schools. So seven will cover your elementary, middle, and high. But the school district already included an extra two, so that's where I got the five from. That's okay. correct. <laughs> All right. So then we want one to cover Oconee Academy and adult ed. They're in the same building currently. And they're all moving? Both of those are moving to the old Hamilton career? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And one to cover the career center may share security with Tri-County Tech when it's built. Okay. So that's really six. So how did we get seven? At seven, then we backed it down to six once we realized that. Okay, all right. So it's really six that we need. And that will cover everybody for the time being. Is that correct? Well, I think yes. the Career Center will be opening this fall. Or no, it's two years. Yeah, Tri-County Tech will be opening mm -hmm. this fall. So, so that's something we pop possibly, if the need is there, could address next year. Okay. But you're going to need... Uh, the issue, even if we're using older vehicles, they have to come from somewhere in order to start this process. It doesn't have to be a shiny new vehicle. No, uh, well, cer Mr. certainly Mulder not. Well, Mr. said this morning that we have how many vehicles coming off? Yes, uh, we 
obviously the with the four hundred thousand dollars that we put into the budget for the sheriff to replace vehicles he's going to be replacing anywhere from 10 to 12 on average is what he can do with that money now half of those are going to be really wore out and maybe half of them are going to be good enough to keep on the road for an sro mm -hmm. um, so i feel like potentially we could use some of the hand-me-down vehicles for now with what we're replacing this year we could potentially get four to six of them from what we're going to replace this year um and we've done that with the last two i think we gave them two older the last two guys got older cars um, uh no actually the school district fully funded equipment and all for, right. the, for the new department. positions um so what we're projecting is about sixty thousand dollars per employee 50 for salary and fringe and, and requirements and then 10 for equipment um, vests, guns, and things like that, I think would be a good estimate um, for those individuals. Um, so if we did 60,000 times six, you're looking at 360. Uh, based on Ms. Camming's alternate plan here, uh, we would take the 250 and we'd still have to find um, 360, 110 to cover the six. The 250, Where, where's the... Um, in the uh, on the council's list where I've included two hundred fifty thousand in the budget as proposed for mm -hmm. new deputy positions, what she's proposing is do away with that, add one hundred and ten to it, and then fully fund the SRO program instead. What positions did you have included in that two fifty? What's the well, my, our, our, our greatest need is uniform patrol. You know, I know there's been some talk about investigators, detectives. We're, we're good there. You know, we feel like we, we're, we're adequately, adequately staffed right now. Uh, but with the call volume that we're receiving, you know, the, the future growth of that, those stores on 93, shoplifting calls, calls for service, uh, huge concern with public events, having a, having a law enforcement presence at... Uh, you know, the last weekend, the yard sale they had out on Tacoa Highway Friday and Saturday, that was a huge traffic jam. We had extra people out there kind of patrolling uh, extra traffic. Uh, going forward, uh, I shared this in the Law Enforcement Committee, but uh, fentanyl, which is, which is a huge problem across our nation, uh, up until now had to be shipped here from China. Factories are up and running in Mexico. So, you know, I'm expecting, we're expecting some, some more issues, more problems with that. So, you know, what the area we need to grow, which to me is just as much of a priority as SROs, is, is our uniform presence in neighborhoods and, and uh, patrolling, hoping to reduce uh, burglaries, uh, you know, the, the crime that's occurring in our, in our neighborhoods. So that was, that was kind of what we had originally had talked about, 200,000, I think, for two positions. Uh, that would that would hopefully increase uniform patrol. We feel like in, in the with the 250 that we had proposed here, we could potentially get three out of that if, if we didn't have to buy a third vehicle. If we could somehow stretch one or something, uh, we could potentially get three new um, positions out of that 250. So we could leave if we left that and added 360 in for the SROs. That would meet both of those needs. 36. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think that's correct. And and share with you the feedback that I've gotten. I mean, you know, we've had several meetings. We've looked at, at alternatives uh, that 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 are less expensive, but the over overwhelming response uh, from citizens was that we would rather have a an SRO in our school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's uh, right. you know, to go ahead, if you if you have to raise my taxes, ten dollars a year or twenty dollars a year, you know, I I would support that. It's it's, it's what citizens are telling me. Okay. So, Mr. Mulder, you said the 250 was three additional uniforms? We, we think it's proposed to do two, but we, I feel like that if we can kind of stretch a vehicle or save, um, you know, some of the equipment, something, we might be able to get three out of that 250. The sheriff and I have kind of talked about that. We feel comfortable, but we'd have to, of course, look at specifics um, with regard to salary fringe. If we can stretch a used vehicle instead of buying a new one. Um, I, I feel like as many bodies as we can get with that 250, it's extremely important to do it, so. It is I think to we us. Can do three. You know, and you know, litter control. I mean, I've got one 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 deputy dedicated to litter, and he takes inmates out. Uh, in the last four years, he's picked up over 35,000 pounds, but he also answers litter calls, investigates complaints. 
So that may be another area of growth. You know, if I had one deputy fully assigned for inmates full time, and then and then the other deputy investigating and, and writing citations for litter, uh, I, th I think would be a, another benefit as well for, for another area of growth. The five fire personnel, this is in addition to what the funding we did last year. Yes. And we added, what was that that we added last year, 285? You know, we added uh, positions last year. This would be in addition. This would mm -hmm. be another five. If you remember, we, we they had requested full funding to have a, a staff member in every one, but we backed that down and, and gave them enough to still work a shift schedule. Mm -hmm. um, so they previously came in and spoke to council and requested enough funding for another five people, and that would fully build out their staff program uh, in order to have somebody in each station. Yeah, but they also want four trucks. <laughs> so, so the 300... Did you speak with anybody from the fire department this afternoon? Not this afternoon. Okay. I mean, I was here all day long, literally, with, in meetings. I gave Chief King an, uh, mm -hmm. an, um, a heads up mm -hmm. that we were going to discuss that change tonight, mm -hmm. just so he wasn't surprised. Mm -hmm. um, he was, was surprised, and has, has called Travis, uh, the ch chief of the fire mm -hmm. chief association um, or commission, and they're backed off of the truck thing. They would rather have the people according to their conversation this afternoon. All right, so how many trucks and how Two many trucks people? Two trucks and, and five people? Five people, as I have it proposed. Okay. They, were, they were supposed to reach out to you to... They did. I got an email from Travis Collins, but he wanted to meet me on Friday. So okay. two trucks and five two people. Trucks and five so I guess people. I'll hear it again Friday. And if, and if you hear differently, we obviously have time to, to change before this budget's approved. Mm -hmm. But that was the information I got this afternoon. Okay. Um, so just to keep that in the back of your mind. So when they, they meet with you, are they... Relaying the same information because I guess Charlie's their chief, right? I guess or what? How, how does that work? Charlie is the county chief, and then yep. you have chiefs of each of the volunteer, volunteer stations. stations. We have a a, mm -hmm. a chiefs commission made up of representatives of mm -hmm. the station chiefs that um, help guide and direct policies and, and procedures and, and direction for our county fire chief, Chief King. And this uh, document I just gave you came from yeah. the fire commission. Okay. So the commissioners discussed that and put it in a document. Okay. And it basically tells us what their needs were <laughs> when they handed me that document. So clearly... Well, I'm just trying to it, it's make changed. sure we're... Mm -hmm. I guess I don't know the, the pecking order with mm -hmm. that to make sure. Because, I, I, you know, if we're, if we're finishing out the... Fire personnel plan because that's what sounds like we're doing with this, correct? Mm -hmm. So correct. that's that's their staffing requirements moving forward. That's what they requested. That's correct, and it'll finish those off. Okay, so. <clears throat> but again, I, I, this is not set in stone. We've got plenty of time to. No, change we it. still need to work on this, but that's why we're having this discussion. All so, right, so we're we're up to six SROs. Uh, two fire trucks and five firemen and women. You know, one of the, th and I'm just kind of reading through the, mm -hmm. the corridor planning and, you know, as the one thing that's always been concerning to me, you know, this this council set, you know, their fund balance at 20%, we're well below that. And I just, you know, we're trying to get back to the point of getting that 20, and I think we're three $3 million off. Of getting yes, but you need to remember that it fell that low because of the FOCUS program. And in a year's time, FOCUS is going to start contributing back. Let the money come back from where it came from. Isn't it a year or two years' time? Two years', two years time. So then they'll start contributing back, and that you will see that grow. Um, the corridor planning and the comprehensive plan is just one time, one event, and we should just knock it out with available funds. Yeah, as stated, we'll have about $1.7 million that we're projecting to be added to the fund balance after this current fiscal year 18. Um, obviously, if you take a hundred and you know, a little over 100000 off of that, you're still seeing a significant, you know, impact. Impact, to, right. Um, and still, you know, accommodate those, those requests. So I think we should just check off corridor plan and comprehensive plan is done. What we'll do is we'll mm -hmm. amend the, the actual line item budget to show a fund balance usage <coughs> of that same amount and then show those expenses in the budget <coughs> as well. So we'll make those modifications.
and then obviously we'll have to back up and, and look at the uh, High Falls uh, upgrade in addition to the, the magistrate. The budget. magistrate, yeah, okay. Given the additional bill is necessary for that $4 million. <coughs> And the proposal on the employee's raise, is there an idea on what the cost associated with that would be? Yes, sir. It was about 323000 uh, for a uh, sliding scale depending on salary giving on the anniversary date. Where'd you get that number from? Um, I, Scott I provided, provided me that number. A while back. Mm -hmm. she had oh, I pulled it out of my back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> we were looking. When Scott and I were talking about it at the time, we were looking at various scenarios, uh, perhaps giving a bonus, perhaps giving a raise, how to how to do it. So, um, is that per year, work. per year additional? That would be a, a salary increase, so it would be an additional recurring cost mm -hmm. every year. Yes. Would the implementation of that be similar to how that? the sheriff's salary increase was? What we would propose, I think that number was a 3%, 2%, or 1% scale, depending on your salary level. So what we would do is give a 3% increase to anybody that made below $50,000. So we want to give the highest percent increase to those making the least amount of money so that it equalizes the impact. And then 2% for anybody from 50 to 100, is that what we said? 50 to, uh, to 80, and then 1% for anybody who makes over 80. Um, so we're, we're reducing because you don't want to give 3% to somebody making over 80 because that's a huge, mm -hmm. you know, a lot bigger benefit than it is mm -hmm. to somebody making 25. So we're, we've reduced the percent increase based on salary schedule. And then they would be issued that increase on their anniversary date, not necessarily everybody on July 1. Um, while that saves a little money in this year, we'd have to find a way to accommodate a full year's worth next year, but uh, it does bring the cost down for this year. Any other? And I think that the thoughts? idea on the raises we had talked about the retirement. No, the retirement was going to recreation. Yeah, yeah. No, the, let's the put the retirement start. towards recreation. Yep. Mm -hmm. What does it cost per pay period to write checks for all the employees? <clears throat> the reason I said that, I asked the treasurer a while ago. He told me around thirty thousand every two every two weeks. It's more than that. Our total pay, pay, our total personnel costs are seventeen million, so it's going to be well over thirty thousand dollars. Maybe I multiplied well. <laughs> six, six to seven hundred thousand dollars per payroll run, just for salaries, and then you've got per two weeks. weeks. Every two weeks. Okay. Yeah, our total our total personnel expenses is you know over 17 million, so it's definitely going to be a larger number than what you were quoted. Okay. Any other yeah, it's actually salaries total for this current year, 19 million. Benefits is 8.6 million. So you're looking at 27 million dollars uh, worth of personnel costs, uh, which is about right because they, they make up about 64 percent of our total budget. I've got a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, the employee raises. Would that include elected officials? <laughs> I mean, it's a serious the question. Time, I mean, the their employees calculated include the elected officials. Are you kidding me? Including us? No, I'm <laughs> talking about treasurer. Oh, or, okay. Or, That's why I was so laughing. I would, I would propose that any increases should go, and that for elected officials, for the next beginning term of you know, if Mike or whoever. Mm -hmm probate judge, whoever, when that term begins, there would be a bump there. Because, I mean, <coughs> costs go up for everybody. 
instead of doing it now with everybody else, you would wait until they were reelected? I mean, just so there's not a, or whoever. I think it needs to be, I think it, it, it's cleaner to do it that way rather than give, no, nothing against any sitting officials, but I think just it's better from that standpoint. But what we're doing this on an anniversary date. Wouldn't their anniversary date be their the beginning of their term? I guess so. Yeah. Are you talking about county council as well, or just the elected officials that are staff, so to speak? I mean, I'd love to have a pay increase, but three percent of what? Three percent of eight thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, uh, two hundred million dollars. Does that come to? I mean, for the next. I mean that that. You see, you see how few people run for this, this wonderful honor. So it is. An honor. It is. It is a, it's true public service. It's true yeah. public service. Um, but I, I mean, I really do think our elected officials that that are full time, forty, fifty hour a week employees. The elected officials need. I mean, that prices go up for everybody. You Gal want to work forty to fifty hours a week. <laughs> we. <wish. laughs> I'm not talking about Mike. Mike works 365 days a year, as far as I can tell. Yeah, but his, I would think his anniversary date is the beginning of his term. Yeah, and that's a good yeah, point. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. just making sure that that, that was included in those elected yeah, officials. The elected official increases are included in the number that they're mm -hmm. voted. $240 out of my budget. <laughs> so then we're talking about, I'm just trying to make changes as y'all were talking about these things. So the fire trucks are 350 but that's just two fire trucks as proposed in, in this thing, correct? Not three. Well, now we're down to two. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we did three, that's an additional 175. No, 350 for an additional truck. Um, we're, we're budgeting 350 per truck. Per the original truck. proposal So was, we're just doing one fire truck here. Well, no, there's already hang on. Let me clear it up. Okay. You've got one that's already in, in the, the budget. budget mm -hmm. that we buy every year. Mm -hmm. I then added in the first line a second, second truck, truck that okay. we bought. Mm -hmm. Then Ms. Kamek and I looked at it today, and she had, you know, we need to clear it up, but she had heard that they didn't want the people, so they wanted the uh, more trucks. So we so that goes to 300000 away from the five uh, people on line three and move it up to line one, add 50 grand to it, and buy a third truck. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But now we've got a little confusion. We're going to kind of keep it like it is now to do two fire trucks, one in the current budget, and one, one that we've added, and then the five new people. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, and then the sheriff positions, 250, those were for road patrol? Yes. For, yeah. And then mm -hmm. another 360. 360, 350. For SROs, SROs. Uh -huh. for six total SROs, which would cover all of our schools. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then sixty thousand. I'm just estimating for litter officer. Would it be less than that? We added a second litter officer. This is an epidemic in our county, and I think we need to. Yes, sir. Well, the, the two fifty that would that would give us potentially three, right, okay. Mr. Yeah, I think we could mm -hmm. possibly get three officers so, out of that 250. Yeah. Okay, so that would take care of one of, one of those could be a litter officer? Yes, sir. Okay. We could. Okay. And then Chal Ram and Magistrate Building. Could y'all, what is the Magistrate Building? Was it 500? 500. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That estimated. And then Chal Ram, I can't remember what that was. What the, the cost? It's, it's actually 15. High Falls um, with what's proposed for this budget. That budget year is 250. But this Charles Ram is doing thing. this year already. Oh, so I, this is really Charles Ram is happening. We had yeah. it backwards. Okay. We met earlier just for names. Mm -hmm. So Charles Ram is being done this, this year. year. Okay. High okay. Falls is what is proposed for next okay. year. Okay. Okay, that's that, what that's what the corridor plan, comprehensive plan. I'm talking about that in the High Falls. So this this is your sheet, right? So that just needs to be Char Ram High Falls. That's yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, we had them backwards when we talked earlier today. So when she did her sheet, she had them backwards.
Yes. That's that clears it up for me. Thank you. So the fire truck at three fifty on your council project page on your council mm -hmm. that stays. That stays mm -hmm. as of right now. That's an additional one than what's in the budget already. That's correct. Mm -hmm. The share position at two fifty. That stays. That stays. Mm -hmm. Fire personnel at three hundred. Um, and then the one the one point two six four is including the corridor plan, comprehensive plan. We got an answer on that, right? Mm-hmm. The high falls upgrade would be that. So is this a one based on what you're saying here? Is that a one? Um, let's see what that. So, <clears throat> is that including the three hundred and twenty-three thousand employee raises? No. 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 Okay. And not not the Westminster Magistrate of half a million. No. No. And not the school resource officers of two of three sixty or or it is. No. No. Okay. So that's if you am I am I reading that properly that that would be one point six needed. Well, no, we're, we're taking out nine hundred in there. Remember that. Okay. Hang on, let me. I'm getting. I'm going to tell you what page to turn to to make maybe make this a little easier. Okay, so in the actual line item budget, the details go to page mm -hmm. go to page nineteen. So the budget that I have presented to you tonight includes funding for those items on the right. You can see 350, 250, 300. There's 900 of this 1.264 that's on the PowerPoint that's in the budget already. So anything you want to do above those first three lines would not be included in the budget number that I presented tonight. It would be an addition. Now, we've taken care of, we'll add in the, you know, plan documents, the comp and corridor. So we can go ahead and exclude those. We'll add those in based on our discussions earlier. Mm -hmm. So in the budget document, as I presented to you as a balanced budget, those first three lines, as you can see on that detailed list, are funded. So if you wanted to do SROs, that would be on top of that. Um, if you wanted to do pay increases, it would be on top of that and the budget would be out of balance. So what we would what we're what I've heard is if we add six SROs, um, we need six times, let's say sixty, that's what, three hundred and sixty thousand mm -hmm. dollars on top of this. And then oh that was it, that's it. And raises. And we said that was three twenty three. Three twenty three. Mm-hmm. So, and then the raises would be 323. So, we would need an additional $683,000 to accommodate those last two items. In the Westminster Magistrate Building, too. Well, that was my next question. So, if we break, if we put in the Magistrate Building, what would, could you, could you bring debt millage? How would you? You know, we brought debt millage back over to operation. Is there a way to put enough in there to put debt millage back on the other side to bond for the magistrate so we didn't have to take a, you know, 500000 Because, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me to do it without bonding. Is there a way that we can do that to create the debt millage back over? We, I mean, obviously you'd have to reduce expenses in any of your other funds in order to free up millage to roll back over. Right or, now, there wouldn't be any millage <clears throat> other than the economic development fund, which because of the 33-33 split, we'll start seeing fee in lieu of tax revenue coming in. Mm -hmm. So that 1.1 mills, if you wanted to just replace that, with, you could potentially move some of that over and just use fee in lieu of tax to fund it. Mm -hmm. But I, we're not, I'm concerned we have, ha, have not even experienced that yet. I'd like to see a year or two of experience of how that revenue is going to start coming in before we take away the millage. Yeah, I don't want to take millage away. I'm just saying, like, if you add, if you added additional millage for that, to, you know, 
for a bond for a debt um, millage? How would that work? You'd you can... need okay. So on a half a million dollar project, let's 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 do a, a term of five years instead of ten on that. You're looking at about a sixty-five thousand dollar year payment would be my guess. Rough, let's call it seventy just for um, easy math. So the value of that mill is roughly five hundred and forty thousand dollars. So let's do a quick uh, seventy thousand. Not seven hundred, seventy thousand divided by five forty. You'd need roughly point one three mills in order to accommodate a seventy thousand dollar debt payment over a five year period. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bowen. Yes. We talked about the Westminster Magistrate's Office last council meeting. Mm -hmm. And everybody you you too, you felt very uncomfortable funding giving them a blank check for half a million dollars because you said and I agree with you they don't have any plans they got no idea they just want us to chunk in a half mil that's right I, I agree that I didn't want to commit to a half a million until right. I saw the plan um, that I didn't have a problem with securing the the plan expenses so we see what we'd be getting yeah um, I think what, what we're talking about now is not necessarily giving them the money. It's just having a plan for, because the plan can be done in three to six months. So in the next fiscal year, you're going to see the plan be completed. If we like it and we want to contribute, what, what is the plan on how to get the money to them? Mm -hmm. And I think that's all we're, we're looking at. I don't think this is, is giving them the money. Nah. It's just in the, in, when the time comes, if we want to uh, do the 500000 how much would it cost us to pay for it? And it's 0.13 mils. Yeah, I want, I want to see what the building's going to look like because yeah. this thing is, like I told you in the past, this thing is approaching the cost of a lake house on Lake Huey, you know, real fast. And we need to, you know, look at, look at what, what else, what, what are we buying into? Are we going to build them a new city hall and give it to them? Is that, is that what, that's some of the questions that people are asking me. Which is why I didn't feel comfortable saying, yeah, yeah we'll pay five they, you know. My people in my district have not forgotten about the Westminster Fire Station the size of a football field. Like and they constantly oh, remind me about it. That's so that's what I was getting at. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, regardless of whether we go forward with Westminster in conjunction with them on a... on a, We still need to build something. We got to build. Right. Of course. I mean, we have to fix that situation. Mm -hmm. And I think, Mr. McCall, some of their concerns were originally is they didn't want to commit to drawings if we weren't going to commit to paying for it. I don't think, you know, to me, it's never been about giving them money. There's They still have to decide if they're going to do it, period. Well, they, but what they don't want to do is they don't want to go through the, the heartache of saying we're going to do it and then go through the planning process, paying twenty three, twenty four thousand dollars $24,000 for renderings, and then us to say, oh, we're not going to fund the 500000 well, Regardless of the plan, what, what we were proposing, what I had proposed in that meeting is, is that we give them a window of opportunity to join in this project. Not to cost us any money, because we've, we've been understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, with Mr. Mulder, that this build is going to cost X, Y, Z. And if they want to add to it, it's not, we're not going to pay any extra, but if they're trying to get that. So I think that's their, their thing is, is they want to make sure if they're going to go through the commitment of building um, the city hall, that we're at not going to pull the rug out from under them. Regardless of what we do, we have to build it. And that's what um, what they were concerned with is we've kind of been back and forth. How many years? I mean, how many years has this been going on? I mean, I this was. I don't want to end up building a city hall and then come back and laugh. But, oh, by the way, you can use one room for the magistrate. And and I think I think I'm there's a lot of things in place that would protect that. And that, that's the same thing happened with the fire station. And and while all of fire people remind me about this all the time. And that was before long before you got on there. What happened? We built a fire we got a fire station down there the size of a football field. It was gonna be this, this, this. And then little by little it was that was even before Mr. Moore got here, it was Kind of the deal kind of dried up. You talk about the I thought I said Wahala, but I guess you're saying Wahala was reminding you of the it's the Westminster Fire Department. Deal. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I hear an awful lot about that too. Well, there's going to have to be some kind of contract in place as to how it's going to be used. 
that's what we need to have. Well, this it's, it's easy. You have to have the magistrate. <laughs> you can't kick the, you no, know. No, but you have how to have they're going to be using space. the space. space. Yeah. Yep. You know, because they can't come and say, well, we need that room today. today. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, we just have a, what, a memorandum of understanding for that. Mm -hmm. uh, it probably more like a lease agreement. Lease mm -hmm. agreement? Yeah. Lease Depending agreement. on who owns it. So, point, point three, one three three. Okay. So 1.5, 1.6. Yep. So and let's get together it. and crunch the numbers one more time. Mm -hmm. Any good. other suggestions before we adjourn? I think we've covered a lot of territory this evening. Does that get us in our vehicle replacement plan close enough to where we're not going to have to get in the mess? Are we going to be in a mess no, next we're, week? We're <clears throat> still avoiding the expenses of our equipment and vehicle replacement. Now, and we've helped because we've added another, you know, fire truck, obviously, in, and that's mm -hmm. a, a big portion mm -hmm. of that, that expense every year. Um, but you've still got, you know, roads and bridges equipment. And Is there, what, equipment. What's, I mean, what's the recommendation to get that back where we're not having huge sums of money? I mean, but I don't want to kick, I don't want to kick the can down the road. I mean, we really need to figure this out because, I mean, I, I see what some of the guys are driving, and I know... Nobody points out the old rust buckets. They point out the brand new black Tahoes. I mean, I, I mean, we we have, we need to really look at what does it take to, you know, get this back going. I, I, we had developed a plan and submitted it to council on a couple of occasions. Um, it was went off memory, right over two million the first year, and then eventually over the next couple of years worked out about 1.3 million a year is what the annual cost of the, the program was, and then it worked its way, its way down to under a million. Um, again, in that one point, or that two million, there's, with this fire truck added, there's $700,000 worth of fire trucks in that two million, so now it's really on, only more like 1.3. In that's also 400,000 worth of share of cars that we've got in the budget, so now it's more like 900,000. So I'd say, you know, it would take another 750 to, to 950 in order to, <clears throat> we've spent enough for one evening Thank I know, you I'm just much. trying to I'm just like I said but I mean spend enough and kick in the can there's got to be something because so, sooner or later somebody's got to pay for it and that's why I'm, and it's always going to be us well, I mean well, somebody really? <laughs> well but no it's always going to be us <laughs> well um, make I mean, a motion we adjourn uh, we don't have public oh, there's comment. no public comment tonight. I'm sorry. This is a budget committee meeting. It's more of a workshop for council. But you can speak to any of us after the meeting. Though. Mm -hmm. So, okay. second. We're good. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.